Well, the capitalist economy did very well in terms of uh, organizing things, uh, just using the biomass up until around 16 or 1700. And after that point, it starts to get uh, difficult uh, because of the competing claims of agriculture for, for food and energy. Energy is siphoned off, and so capital accumulation during the industrial era can take off as if it has no constraints of energy production, of energy consumption. So, fine, you solve the problem. But that then becomes a precursor of the, the industrial, of the, of, the, of the greenhouse gas emissions. This is, if you like, an analogy I want to use in relationship to fictitious capital. Capital did, did fine about claims on future labor and claims on the future in general uh, output. Uh, all the time, all, all, all the time, the credit system could work in the way that it did. But in so doing, it increased the amount of fictitious capital within the system. Uh, in other words, this is a bit like the greenhouse gas emissions. So what, what eventually happens is that we, we, we get, yeah, we get uh, capital, which is doing absolutely great during the 1990s, say. It's doing fine. I mean, China's coming on board, a huge amount of increase in everything that's going on. Total output in the global economy is surging at hugely, hugely. Uh, profit rates are reasonably good and so on. But then we start to say, well, but more and more uh, uh, are we running into the greenhouse gas problem, but also we're running into the fact that there's an increasing amount of fictitious capital in formation because we're having longer and longer term investments. We're getting much more you know, fixed capital and consumption fund formation. Uh, the, the dynamics of the system are such that the credit system becomes more and more significant, but the credit system becomes more and more uh, a situation in which the gap between what is imagined and what is really possible starts to expand to the point where when you start to look at indebtedness on the global scale, we see an exponential growth since 1980. Huge increase in indebtedness and a huge increase in, in fictitious capital formation to the point where now fictitious capital formation is the problem. You can actually go out now and instead of investing in production, you can start to trade, you know, stocks and shares against government debt, against, uh, you know, uh, carbon futures, against um, uh, financial um, currency futures, against... So all of these different uh, uh, markets exist in which fictitious capital starts to circulate in search of fictitious capital. So in a sense, in a sense, fictitious capital, uh, in the same way that it produces an ambient gas, CO2, in increasing amounts, which then creates serious, serious problems that need to be resolved. So actually, you create an ambient form of capital. That is a form of capital, which is fictitious capital, which is circulating, circulating in fictitious capital markets. So more and more capital is fictitious capital chasing fictitious capital. And the result of that is that you've got a, a, a situation where the likelihood of a major crisis, uh, fictitious capital formation, is clearly there in exactly the same way that we have a fictitious capital. We've got a, a crisis of greenhouse gas emissions, which is clearly there. And it gets to the point where capital, like I said, can simply uh, invest in capital, which is the definition of a Ponzi scheme. All right where you actually borrow more money to pay the interest on the money you just borrowed, and you just Ponzi it up like that. Right right now, I think to me, myself, actually, fictitious capital is the global Ponzi scheme in which an ambient form of capital is available worldwide for anybody to invest in uh, at any time, and people are making their money simply out of uh, speculating on the different qualities and quantities of uh, financial capital that are in circulation. And there is a huge gap between the fictitious capital which exists and the real capital which exists. And this is, I think, one of the reasons why I would speculate myself on there likely to be a very serious crash uh, in the financial system, particularly uh, because the fictitious capital is actually built now into a global Ponzi scheme, and that Ponzi scheme in, in, invariably becomes undone, except in this case, the Ponzi scheme is so big that you can't afford to undo it.